The views and opinions expressed on this program do not reflect the company, owners, management, staff, clients, or partners. It's Thursday, the 28th day of September 2023. Welcome to Bermuda's Daily Talk Show. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House and Lindos. I'm Jamal Hartman, and um, she's Sherry Vanderpool. And uh, Maya Palacio will be with us in a bit to bring you the latest in her news break brought to you by People's Family. Sherry, just tell everyone how backstage you were saying how much you missed me and all that stuff. Oh, you know, I don't tell lies on her, Jamal. I leave that up to you. I don't tell lies. I said, Jamal, I know you miss me. And Maya said, yeah, I do. I do. I do, Sherry. And I said, I know. That's why I didn't ask her first. Yeah. And he still hasn't said it. But I know he does. And I it's mean, fine. I, I can't blame Maya. I mean, being with me alone ain't a great thing for anybody. She, I mean, I, I, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Won't you tell it? Don't you tell it. I'm a lot to deal with. I know, I know. You all know. She's just like, did he just say that? Oh my goodness. But anyway, Sherry, it's it's a pleasure to have you back. I mean, um, I ain't had nobody to win an argument against in a while. Win an argument or have one, but you know, it, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You chose a yeah. great time to come have it because you know, uh, we, we have the information commissioner on this weekend. Of course, you know that um did first off, did you see Mr. Photogenic's um um, comedy regarding the cyber? Incident. No, I didn't. I didn't. You, yeah, I, I, I think honestly, man, <laughs> you know how they say people come in your life or come into a, a space at the right time. I think that I don't think he gets enough credit for how he's been able to entertain people through the from the pandemic through now. Because this guy, <laughs> like, would just just... take your mind off of the most like stressful days. And it's so natural for him, right? <laughs> Which is a good thing because yeah. within him, he has an energy and a presence to bring laughter and lightness, you know, yeah. and in times of need. And, you know, that's his superpower. Yeah, yeah. It's, he's doing it well because, my goodness, I mean, trying to get a smiling moment of anything to do with David Bird and his administration ain't easy. But um, no. <laughs> what's your superpower, Jamal? Annoying. They were going, and I thought it was just like going in low places, like just being you, able to go you under. Not joking for like five weeks, didn't you? My goodness. See, Maya, this this is the abuse I'm talking about. I'm not talking to my therapist about you, Sherry. But anyway, greetings, everyone. Thanks for making us part of your daily routine. A good one today as we welcome the Information Commissioner of Bermuda, Gitanjali Gutierrez, on it's International Right Day, uh, Right to Know um, Day, Sherry. Like right to know, like your right to know who I'm dating and who I'm like, you know, doing the, yeah, sorry, not, not that. I don't want to know that, but I didn't even see that out there. It's Jamal. When I, when I, I think we mentioned it earlier, I was like, no, I didn't see, not, I didn't see that. No, but it, yeah. It's not long. It's like 2018, 2019, something. It, it's, okay. it's, it's to me, it's one of the newer things that should have been, should have existed at least since, I mean, I can't say since you were born. We're talking 1800s, but at least since I was born, um, you know, like it, you've it's, been waiting for that, right? Yeah, you know, hey, man, show up, joke, old joke. You know how we are. Um, yeah, but um, it, I'm looking forward to the conversation. But as I said yesterday, folks, um, these conversations were planned before any cyber incident took place. So do not think this on. And I say that r really being honest because I know people who think, oh, they're here to attack the government. That's not the case. These conversations were already planned. And we have, this is the third year in a row that we've had the commissioner on 
rights to no date. So it has nothing to do with that. However, we may drift and discuss that because this is of public interest. And well, yeah. you know, it's the information commissioner's office. And so it's just, and it's just done a lot this last week, Jamal. Like the effect. And you left it hurt for me to talk about it all by myself. I, I tell you that. <sighs> anyway, Daily Play is the name of that place today. So <laughs> I have a right to know Jamal. I have a right to know <laughs> <laughs> see what you did there. I'm there at the commissioner to step in for that. Um, don't forget to subscribe on our website, dailyhour.com. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Well, Sherry, before we get 10 points for Sherry, what'd she do? A short uh, joke? Mm-hmm. Sure did. Yeah. Yeah, but it. that went over your head too, so it's fine. <laughs> You are on form today, my goodness. Well, for, let me drink let me get you some more all, coffee. In the last few weeks, not seeing me, huh? You held all this in. That's all. It's okay, though. But we got a conversation for you, folks. Um, before we bring uh, Maya in for the news break and the information commission of Bermuda, it is International Business Week in Bermuda, Sherry. Okay. And um, we had uh, Travis Trot on. Um, for, he was representing ABIC on Tuesday, and we were speaking about the IB sector. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to a business owner, very prominent business owner in Bermuda and CEO, um, was it yesterday? Just yesterday. And what they said to me was very interesting. And, and it really made me think, Sherry, like, wow. Think about, think about what I'm saying. I'm not going on a rant. Audience, really consider what I'm about to say to you. <clears throat> CEO said to me, Basically, it, people in Bermuda, regardless of what they do right now, should probably transition to the IB sector because it's the only sector that the government isn't ruining. Think about that. The government's got their hands all in tourism and education everywhere else but the IB sector. But you know why? Because as ridiculous as whatever you think the government may be. They know that the one thing holding the economy together is the international business sector. Yeah. And if they mess with that, they're messing with their own food on their table. So all that to say, um, I think regardless of what we do and what we love to do, somehow we need to encourage more Bermudians to uh, engage the sector, whether that means working in it, working with it. And the question of the morning is, how can we encourage more Bermudians to transition into the international business sector? How can we encourage, like for me, I don't know about you, Sherry, I, I went to, you know, they had, um, what was it, Bermuda Careers Network, different things when I was yeah. young. And I, was <clears throat> and I remember going to different places in Bermuda, trying to get career assessments and so on. And they, was, they were telling me, oh, you should go into law. You like to talk and debate and argue. I don't know where they got that from. But once I heard that. that to me too. You see, that's what I'm saying, right? But, but Sherry, here's the thing. Once they told me how long law school would be, I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Bro. I mean, it still took me like eight years to get a bachelor's degree. So, I mean, it didn't matter. But my point is, once they told me how long it would take, I was like, nope, I don't want to be. Inside. I will leave that one alone. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the other thing what they were saying, well, you know, um, finance and uh, reinsurance, those are the big careers that are going to become. And I'm like, so I went to work in insurance for two summers at a, one of the local insurance companies. I thought it was the most boring thing ever. Right. And this is again, let me say that I'm not saying disrespecting anyone's career. I, I'm speaking for me. I just thought I need to do something where I'm engaging. So they told me, well, how about computer information systems? Okay, I went with it. My first major in college was IT. Can you imagine me sitting on a computer all day and not talking to people, Sherry? Think about it. Well, but Jamal, in regards to yourself, it, that kind of works for you differently, right? Because mm -hmm. you like people and you don't like people. And I don't know people know that. <laughs> you uh, know what I mean? Balanced, yeah. Yeah, so you, you would have needed a balance. But I get what you're saying, yeah. So like, but yeah, you get me. Like, it's, it's like, I, I really, I tried IT. I, my grades were in bed, but I just said, I can't do this. And so I done another, another career assessment um, when I was in college and 
they said you need to do something where you're engaging people. Um, and Cher is right. I, as I've gotten older, I'm not as peoply as I used to be. I'm not as engaging as I used to be. Um, but I found a way back to communications and in and, and that space and business where I would be able to engage people. So um, when you think of the IB sector, I also, like my mama didn't want me to major in radio or TV. She was like, Oh, there's because they would say to you, oh, those opportunities don't exist in Bermuda and da 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 da. That, that's what they would say. And she didn't allow me to double major until I um hot one of five into island communications actually started in Bermuda because it was another option. And that's when she allowed me to dual major. Now, the great thing about my dual major, it one was business, the other was video and radio, television, right? So I actually had two majors at that point. My point is, um, would I be able to transition into the IB sector now? Um, likely because I have a business background. I have yeah. um, business degrees, but there's spaces that I can get into. There's communications, there's marketing. Um, if that's something that a transition I wanted to make. And I say all that, Sherry, because when I was young, they made me believe it was finance, reinsurance, and like stuff that accounting that I was not interested in. As I've grown older and understood the sector, there's so much more that even someone like it that's into social work can go in and work in HR, right? Um, we've seen Garita Coddington, who is at KPMG, an educator, went from being a print teacher and a principal, and now she's working in, um, I believe, HR, coaching and um, yeah. helping KPMG. So the transition opportunities are there. So even my journalists, they're looking for PR people in there. You know, they're looking for um, marketing and, 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 and communications people. So all three of us here today could probably transition. So again, the question for the audience is, how can we encourage more Bermudians to transition into the international business sector? Hey, if anybody's looking for somebody in that sector, holler at me because I'm ready to transition. <laughs> Just to piggyback off of what you said, Jamal, I think we have to look at generations, right? Uh -huh. And during my generation, what was the main drive? Get a government job, right? Or a government job. Get you a government job. You know, um, my first interest was in fashion merchandising and that was my first um my first major but then someone said girl you need to be a social worker i think it's a generational um period we go into government work and then if there was that accounting um period and now is international business and i do think to be able to get excited about it People like KPMG are doing great jobs of going into the school systems and getting people and young people to understand and know what's out there for them. And the difference between what was presented to us, and I include you in that, Jamal, but presented to what is presented now is the different avenues that persons can, with their different passions, be in that IB business um, sector. Um, and we, we can't lie, like, and I'm just gonna put out there, the pay is good. The pay is good, people. It's the, yeah, I mean. The, the benefits, office, Jamal. If there were a downside, I know some people are saying, you know, I, I've heard people say one of the, the only downsides they experience is family time. Like it, it is much more um, time you're investing. But some of the, something that Travis Trott said the other day, um, remember what we were saying earlier, what I said earlier in terms of, Back then, they made me feel like it was only reinsurance and finance and accounting. And Travis Trott said on Tuesday, he's like, well, as far as international business, it's not just reinsurance and captive. Bacardi, headquartered in Bermuda, is an international business, right? Yes. Bacardi is a spirits brand, right? So, and I'm going to use, look at someone like Danielle Painter, right? She is a, you know, fire brand, like a, a PR person, communications, like to me, She's a person that could come on and join us as a co-host on this show and do well. But my point is saying that the way she portrays herself is she can transfer throughout different areas. She can go from the IB sector into government. She can probably come into radio and TV space. A person like her and Garita Coddington, those are inspirations. Those are people that can, that, that, that can make you believe, you know what? I don't need to be good at math or an accountant. I'm not saying they're not good at math, folks. Let me just be clear. <laughs> I'm just speaking for myself, but it doesn't mean that you have to be a math expert or a financial guru or accountant. Um, I think right now with the, the amount of people that may have lost employment uh, because of the pandemic, 
especially in the tourism and hotel sector, you have transferable skills. Believe that. Mm -hmm. Believe that. Like you, you never know what people are looking for. Um, it could be the simplest thing. If you have ever done something, like let's say you've, you've been in a position in a hotel and you've been in charge of hiring people um, in the restaurant sector. You didn't, weren't in HR, but as the manager, you were responsible. Well, you do understand what it takes to hire people, looking over a resume, interviewing people, right? Who's to say you can't transfer your skills into an HR department in one of these companies? Yeah. It may not be a manager, it could be a coordinator, but if you do well and you prove yourself, you might they might say, you know what? This is a good person to train. Let's send them one that was it SPHR, you know, that there's initials for HR. You you get what yeah. I'm yeah. for that certification. <clears throat> But Jamal, let's also give it up to the IB sector who has also recognized and realized that there's other areas <clears throat> to involve persons and involve their passions. But it's very smart on their behalf, right? Because it only grows their business into a bigger area and more competitive if you have different sections that aren't, aren't just covered by one person or that the focus isn't just on accounting, reinsurance, being an underwriter and so forth, because it takes many positions to formulate a company and make it work and run well. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Um, actually, let's go to the audience. I think Michelle White was trying to tell us something. Um, okay. Question of morning, folks. Um, keep, keep, keep in mind, we're, we're trying to figure out how can, how can we encourage uh, more Bermudians to transition into the IB sector. Like, audience, what would it take for you? Be, be vulnerable with us this morning. What would it take for you to move from where you are, if you're not already in that sector, into the IB sector? Like, how, how would you be able to transition? Now, I'm going to say, if I were working in as a public, are these public, like civil servants or public officers now? That's what they're yeah. called. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I were a public officer, I wouldn't think I'm getting a pension the way this government run. So I'll probably be out anyway. But anyway, yeah, sorry, sorry. It happens sometimes. But if I were a public officer and I looked at the IB sector, I would probably be concerned. And I'll tell you why. So there's a flip side. We do see mergers and transition um, ac acquisitions in the IB sector. Yeah. And when mergers and acquisitions happen, people usually lose jobs, right? So I know there may be a fear of actually transitioning into that space. Let me put that out there. So if I'm a public officer, I'll probably be saying, no, I'm probably safe for her because they don't lay people off. Yes, Jamal, but in my experience of uh, different persons that I know in the IB sector, you can get another job in any place yeah. in the world, yeah. not just in the world, you know? And so, it's that opportunity when you hear, you know, your friends going to Switzerland, going to the UK, going to Germany, going to coming to the United States. Like you can get another position with another company in anywhere in the world. And if you are able to allow that mindset to set in, that's exciting. Yeah. I can live outside of Bermuda at, in a different company through the IB sector. Yeah. That does I it for me. That's a benefit right there. Seriously. Michelle Weiss is just coming in for a moment. Uh, she must be busy. Um, knowing about transferable skills and education, a career offers is vital to sharing with young people. Absolutely. Um, transferable skills. I mean, we all should have them. I, I truly believe everyone on this show has transferable skills um, that can help any company. Uh, yeah. I think... I don't think we uh, live in a space where people think about transferable skills. Mm -hmm. I don't think that someone who's a social worker, I'm picking on social workers because shares, that's what she does. But I don't think most social workers would believe they could go and work in IB, Sherry. No, but as I'm sitting here thinking, I'm just like, you know, social work is also counseling, is also therapy and so forth. And I am happy to work remote and be a therapist for any IB sector out there that would love to speak to me. I'm just saying. Ask, ask Jamal, ask anybody <laughs> who calls me. I feel like I'm a magnet for that, which is an awesome thing, right? When I look at what my passion is, I'm just like, and, and someone says, why aren't you a counselor? Why aren't you a therapist? Like, I'm like, I don't know, but not a therapist. Pardon me. You're not a therapist. 
I I'm yours. I know that. I, I got one client. I mean, um, you got one thing. But no, I, I no, I think you're right, Sherry. And I think um, as the world becomes more and more what it's becoming, if that makes sense, um, companies may need that in-house therapist. You know, things are becoming more stressful. Um, yeah. and to me, it's a part. Like I know many companies have created wellness programs. Um, one of the parts of wellness that they're focusing on is mental health, right? Yeah. And audience, just let us know, um, has your company created a wellness program? Because IB companies would be, the first, like, think about it. I remember people going into the IB sector when I was in, like, primary school, high school, and they said, oh, I have a gym at my, my mom has a gym at her job. I'm like, a gym at your workplace? Job retention. They have daycares. Yeah. You know, after yeah. school programs. It's called job retention. And it's it's a it's a double edged sword, right, Jamal? I could bring my child, but I'm also gonna have you being able to work longer hours because we have some. So there is an element of that family time that you spoke about and have it being quality family time right yeah. but it's very smart for the ib sector to bring everything in-house so that it that you have that availability uh to still take care of your family and i, I still think it's brilliant in that sense um Benit, uh, b denise hollis says uh good morning my company has hired people from the banks and these people don't have any insurance slash reinsurance background you know transferable skills they've worked in banks yeah. they know a bit about money and um and she says, uh, yes, they pay for our gym. So they have gym they benefits. They pay for the gym. They pay yeah. benefits. Oh. Yeah. I, I think. They... I, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got something yesterday that we get something for a gym. I'm just, I, I don't know. I, I need to start reading my benefits. I just make sure when I go to the doctor, that everything's good. So, you know. Anyway, um, let's bring my in for the Daily Hour News break. Um, and uh, don't forget, we have the Information Commissioner coming on. Folks, um, if you pay attention to the news, um, and you should, honestly, um, some of the most important um, information um, that is shared in our news on a regular basis comes from the Information Commissioner's office. Uh, and I'm being dead serious when I say this. Like, if you read those press releases, there's absolutely no reason, no reason you should have questions about a lot of things. Um, I get them directly so I don't have to read the news. So when I read them, I'm always like, hmm, who would have known? Uh, one of the most recent press releases is about the recent cyber incident involving government. Well, if you saw the press release the other day and you heard what I said on this show and on my Twitter, that press release left me with more questions uh, than it did answers. Um, and I thought it was unfortunate but uh, that the Department of Communication and Information, as well as the government of Bermuda, who was so quick via the premier to state that, you know who, we don't call that name on this show. I did not say his name, right? We don't call that name, all right? He doesn't type it either. <laughs> not even in WhatsApps. I don't mess with them. That's Hillary Clinton and all you guys, and but I don't do that. But anyway, you know who was blamed for it by our premier. But ever since, we are very... I guess, um, private with the information that we're sharing. Um, and I think it's the public deserves to know. They deserve to know. And as I said, DCI, you don't work for the premier or the government. You work for the very people who are paying your salaries, and that's the taxpayers of Bermuda. Let's bring Maya Palacio in and see what she's got to yell to me about today. I mean, she's got news, so it's, I'm just hoping I said nothing wrong either. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. Hey, MP, how you doing? Sherry, I'm so happy to have you back, man. Ah, my goodness. <laughs> oh, yes. Really? Yes. Well, MP, I give love who is giving love to me, Jamal. I, I didn't give you love? Go ahead, Maya, with your news break. Oh, well, I got a question for first. Maya, okay. yes. would you, you, you have a lot of skills beyond just presenting news, right? Um, you have PR skills. You do a lot of social media marketing that people have no idea that you're behind. Um, would you think you would want to transition into the IB sector if a great opportunity presented it to you? Not right now, but ever. ever. Like, if, Would you ever want to get into a space like that? Honestly, I, I haven't really given it a lot of thought. Jeez, uh, I know a lot of my friends are in IB and I mean, they're getting paid well and they like it there. Um, 
I don't know. And they seem to have flexible hours, to be honest. So it seems like a good job, good opportunity, good pay. And the only place where I see them, my friends are happy about the money that they make. So I wouldn't say it's out of my reach or, you know, my landscape of viewing, but I also just know I want to be bouncing around the world a lot more. <laughs> it's interesting. I'm going to pick on Teo. I remember Teo. So um, Teo was doing radio, right? Everybody knows being in media isn't the greatest pay, but it's an enjoyable job. And if you remember Teo, Teo was known as that kid that graduated college by 19 and high school at 14 and all that. And it was this pressure that people would put on him who that knew that and be like, oh, why aren't you a lawyer or a scientist or a doctor in it? Because I don't want to be that, right? <laughs> and I think Maya, I'm not sure if you experienced the same pressure. Like, did you experience the same pressure? Like, even as Sherry and I, where people would try to guide you to, like, accounting and finance and reinsurance? Um, no. I don't, I don't feel like I did. Like, I know it was definitely heavy in my school. A lot of people thought I thought that, you know, that would be where everyone should go. But I sucked at math, guys. Like, I <laughs> I was not good at math at all. I'll be so honest. Like, English was my go-to and sports was my go-to. And I said I wanted to be a sports journalist when I was in high school. And that's what I set out to be. No matter what someone told me, oh, you should do this. Should. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. And I got some really good advice growing up um, from one of my bosses back in the day. She said, follow your passions. You keep following your passion and money would always come to you. So do what you love you know don't you know sacrifice and like i said on the show before like my ancestors didn't do all of that for me to be unhappy in some job just for money yeah i agree well thank you maya what you got for us today well good morning good morning everyone this is the daily on news Week brought to you by the amazing people at people's pharmacy starting out the news this morning google has announced the launch of nuvium a new transatlantic subsea cable system that will connect portugal bermuda and the U.S. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what's in this uh, press statement that came in an article from Capacity, sorry, CapacityMedia.com. They said this new cable path will add international route diversity and support the development of ICT infrastructure for the countries involved. New York's landing location will create an opportunity in terms of trade, investment, and productivity and urgency that are fast emerging as hubs for international connectivity. The government of Bermuda has made concerted efforts to attract investment in subsea cable infrastructure and created a digital Atlantic hub by passing new legislation to create cable corridors and streamline permitting. So the um, deputy premier minister, Walter Rabain, said Bermuda has long been committed to the submarine cable market and we welcome the Nubium cable to our fast growing digital Atlantic hub. And also the CEO of the Bermuda Business Development, David Hart, said that the Bermuda Business Development Agency welcomes the announcement of Google that Bermuda will be the home of the new transatlantic cable on the path to becoming a digital hub of the Atlantic. I'm, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I have to interrupt. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I almost up. finished. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My hand's up because I I, I think headline is you kind of got it. But Maya, honestly, I'm trying to wrap my head around this in the most serious way. Go ahead. Respect to Mr. David Hart. Had a good conversation with him in the past. But we were talking about time and earlier, Maya. This announcement on the heels of a cyber thing. Okay, I thought it was me, Jamal. I, and, and I'm being respectful. I'm honestly, Maya, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I, it's, it's not you. It's not you. But it just, it doesn't give me warm comfort. It, it does, it shouldn't, it, it's, 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 we're supposed to be celebrating what you just said, you know? We're supposed to be like, I, I want it to be like, yes, this is good, but my, my, it's hard. And what I think makes it harder, and I, again, folks, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'll never do that to my again. I'm, I'm so sorry. But what gets me is it's so hard to be excited, not because the cyber incident happened, but because of what's happened since. You, you get me? So I'm sorry about that, but it, it, it's simplistic. I'm just like, is this like another line to be able to steal other stuff or attack us? <laughs> like, did we just like, go okay. right the path? <laughs> like, are we protect? Is does this put us in a more vulnerable state? Is what I'm what I'm asking, Maya. It's like you, you got me. What I'm saying, like, does the, I, I don't know. It's we should be celebrating this, and I just feel as if no, this this doesn't sound like it's a good thing if we can't even protect ourselves. Maybe I'm looking at too, mis too much, too many Mr. Food. No, no, you're right. But like, as I was going to close out saying that this was, um, do they actually put into 
like the plan in 2026. So we do have a lot of time before this actually happens. And we've got three years and knowing uh, things that actually have a time placement times don't normally always go as they say. So they say three years could be a little bit longer and that this is supposed to help decrease the latency for Google users and Google Cloud customers globally as well. But a lot of having to do with investments and things. And this would be like the first of its kind. Okay. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy about it for Bermuda. I'm happy about it. That's better, my. No, you could have waited till I finish. Okay. Oh, I'm nice in the sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm getting a gift for doing that. Because <laughs> you know, I always ask you what you think afterwards. Put on the hundred. <laughs> Get him, Maya. Up next in the news this morning, everyone. So the Bermuda Union of Teachers says the employees of Bermuda Government Department have gone without payment for months. Um, they say they have been asking for assessment in the leaderships, and they also say that many schools lack Wi-Fi. This was a very long press release that was sent out um, yesterday around 12 p.m., and just going to fill this up here while I give a little bit of mention as to some things that were actually stated in the press release that was put out by the Bermuda Union of Teachers, they say, I'm going to quote a paragraph in the bottom here, but however, while discussing IT, many schools still lack Wi-Fi access, yet teachers are still expected to deliver curriculums that depend on internet access. Of course, if we don't perform miracles, then we're not doing our jobs. The minister goes on to call for collaboration. It will be interesting to see how this will unfold, considering that the Commissioner of Education seldom responds to emails sent by the union on behalf of members who are seeking answers about system issues, missing contracts, unpaid salaries, and similar matters. This lack of responsiveness pre predates the recent hacking incident. Also, the Commissioner of Education is refusing to host a combined consultative meeting, which brings all stakeholders together in education and has refused Used since she was appointed to the post. This speaks to her atrocic, sorry, atrocratic um, system and flat out refusal to collaborate with partners. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, but, Sarah, can I? So it, it just seems like this is a cycle. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like we're on the hamster wheel. feels like this press release, not necessarily or dismissing what the teachers say, because they're, what they're stating is very valid. But when are we going to do something about it? Because it feels like this is what is said at every beginning school year. I know so what, it's not I, the teachers. A happening though, Sherry, like another yes. know, administration, maybe they're going to be a part of that. Unfortunately, the marches are on 10 a.m., so teachers oh. still can't be a part of that one. <sighs> That's the tough part. Yeah, yeah. they still have to get well, into Maybe the they can. But I, again, I think they're at the point where they just want to give the students, you know what I'm saying? It's a tough one, Sherry. It's like, what's that quote saying? Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you also have to show uh, where the, I don't want to use the word, where the power is or the strength is. And, you know, if you take teachers out of the classroom, what happens next? Mm -hmm. Because that's what can really happen if, if everyone decides to resign or move on to different spaces, correct? And I mean, I'm not enticing or doing anything. Yeah, she's not inciting, basically, folks. She's <laughs> yeah. Not, not say, giving her opinion. She don't want that responsibility. Well, Sherry told us to march. No, she didn't say that. <laughs> she's just saying, what if you do? Just as there's just a lot of pressure going on. That's, that's what I can put it there. There's a lot of pressure on both ends. Now, coming off the heels of the teachers saying that no one has, well, some people have not been paid for months, there's an update for payroll for public officers. So the government spokesman this evening confirmed that the Minister of Finance, in conjunction with the Ministry and Department of Controls, would ensure payroll for public officers is run for both monthly and weekly paid staff. So there's your update there. Let me tell you, if there's going to be an uproar, it will be one tomorrow. If there's if monies do not hit those accounts, um, say, or is it tomorrow, Monday? Yeah, it should be tomorrow, right? Mm. Yeah, it should be tomorrow. So. You know me. I, I want everybody taken care of, but I'd like to see if that money didn't hit up accounts. I want to see what people would do. I would love to see what people would do. I'm That's not cool the conversation. I'm just saying. Go ahead, Mike. Closing up my news, uh, as I mentioned before earlier this month, but people may have forgotten it, but WeSpeak has this competition going on right now, and 
they need people to join in on this competition. If you didn't know, We Speak is an organization that does help uh, teens, young women um, speak out and get confidence or being in different rooms, whether it be business rooms or just in areas where they might feel too shy to actually speak up and use their voice. So this competition is a competition where, you, where a lot of students can actually win money as from the age range of 14 to 18. So do like a quick one minute, two minute video just about what makes you confident in speaking. So it is due on Friday. Friday is the last day to submit um, your video. Um, it's a chance to win money. So if you know any young girl between the ages of 14 to 18 and have been working on this speaking or just loves videography in general, get them to apply. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Nice. How's yeah. the weather looking today? It's going to rain on somebody's parade. Uh, it shouldn't be raining, but early sun that increases a little bit of clouds today. So let's hope for no rain. And we have a high of 83 degrees. All right. What's the days of the year, Sharon? Well, as you said, it was international um, right to know, but I also found out that today is World Maritime Day. So connecting markets across the world from container ships to tankers, this vital industry keeps goods flowing and economies growing. Many people don't know or realize that more than 80% of the world's global trade is transported through international shipping. That means most of the consumer goods and, and that enter in business and homes all um, over the world were shipped to get there. So today is Maritime, World Maritime Day. And we should know about shipping in Bermuda. Yeah, that ship break down, you ain't eat. You Real rely quick. on that. <laughs> yeah, I forgot Sherry was um, coming today, so I did one as well, right? So it's Good Neighbor Day. And you all know I don't really like my neighbors. Um, so anyway. Um, you don't know your neighbors anyway. <laughs> that's my point. So I can't like them if I don't know them. Um, I, know, I know mine. Well, you live in the woods, there's only about two people. But anyway, um, <laughs> my, 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 it's, it's Good Neighbor Day. So um, guys, what I read is how to celebrate Good Neighbor Day. Basically, you can bake them some cookies. Well, I don't bake, so I'll get some cookies from the store. In fact, you can write them a greeting card. Well, I try to send Maya one, but she gave me the wrong address. Don't want me to have her address. Um, and then they say you can um, you know, take them grocery shopping or pick them up, some, up a little something from the store. I mean- Take them grocery shopping. Yeah, I have a six pack of- um, uh, Corona um, with alcohol, zero point whatever. So I can give yeah, them, yeah, I can give them one of those. But folks, do something good for your neighbors. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to knock on my neighbor's door and I'm not running because I'm in Florida. It's a crazy state, lawless state. You knock on somebody's door and run, they shoot me. All right. So what I'm going to do is if I go in the parking lot today, I'm just going to say, greetings, I'm Bermudian. How are you? And see what they say back. So I'll, let me record it for you guys. I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. 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 I'll record it for you. And I'll, Please I'll, record I'll, it. You might need to. Good luck. Yeah, this is Florida. If you don't want to go up and say, Maya, honestly, really, really sorry earlier. I got, I, 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 I'm fine. I, I owe you a gift. I, I couldn't take it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I really mean that, folks. I, 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 she'll probably yell at me after the show, but I'm sorry. I, I did not, I lost control for a minute. I couldn't, you know how they get me, but I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. My apologies. Mm -hmm. I that accept the apology. Right. And you accept the gift, Maya, whatever it is. That part. Accept the gift with the apology. Thank you. All right. You don't hurt it. All right. See you later, Maya. Bye. Information Commissioner coming up, folks. This is a very important conversation. Please, please, please stay tuned. Make sure you share it. Um, we're going to take a quick break. Come back after this. Get ready. BAC Group of Companies will be having a huge clearance sale. Many products will be discounted by up to 75%. Mark your calendars because this deal will only be offered from September 28th to the 30th. That's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the BAC parking lot. Big discounts on vanities, toilets, AC units, light fixtures, and much more. You do not want to miss out. Discounts up to 75%. BAC parking lot, September 28th to the 30th. Be there and stay big. People's ACW, located at King Edward VII Memorial Hospital, carries over-the-counter medicines, toys, cards, and even toiletries. Our knowledgeable staff are there whether you're at emergency, visiting family, or a member of BHB staff to show you our best even when you're feeling your worst. People's ACW, we're here for you. Welcome to the new bulk store, Lindo's Next Level.
mom celebrating her 70th birthday next month. Have you noticed her age is catching up with her? Yeah. Plus, she's having a hard time getting up and around like she's used to. I would sure hate to see her fall. At Medical House Limited, we can help make life situations easier. We have electric beds, motorized scooters, bath stools, walkers, you name it. Mom's been real good to us. We'll get her birthday and Christmas gifts from Medical House. Medical House has relocated next to the Dandy Town Field. Number 6, Bakery Lane, Pembroke. Telephone, 292-3622. All righty, welcome back to the big show. Sherry Vanderpool, I'm Jamal Harkness, The Daily Hour. Brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy. Please do not forget to go on our website and subscribe. It's thedailyhour.com. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Without further ado, let's bring in our very special guest for the day, one of my favorite people and one of the most important and critical roles in our society, in our community, in our island, in our country. Um, she's the Information Commissioner of Bermuda, Gatanjali Gutierrez. Give a warm TVH welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. <laughs> how, first of all, how, how are you? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I, I feel like I'm joining family dinner with the two of you right now. <laughs> no, you have to grill us from food at each other. <laughs> But I'm good. I'm good. Our office is good. Um, we're working hard. This is a good time of year for us. And of course, there's important, important issues happening around Bermuda that we're um, happy to be talking to you and excited to talk to, talk to Bermuda about it. Indeed. And, and I say this because I was just talking to Taylor yesterday morning. And um, as I, I've only become a like avid reader over probably the last three years since the pandemic. I started ordering a lot of books and just reading. And I, I was, as I read your press releases out of your office sometimes, I just said, I really hope there's a book that comes out one day mm. of the cases and like the start of the information commissioner's office, mm. some of the cases. I really think it's something. And, and that's why I was serious when I said earlier, I really do hope people take the time to read some of the things that are coming out of your offices. And what I want to do right now is just ask the audience, I please Actually, I plead with you right now to share this conversation with your people on WhatsApp, your friends, your family, because we're going to be speaking about some things that literally everyone should know. But you just mentioned your office. Just reiterate for people who may not know what the role of your office is. So I'm the first information commissioner for Bermuda, and my office is the information commissioner's office or the ICO and we're responsible for overseeing enforcement and compliance of the Public Access to Information Act. That's the PATI Act. People may have heard of that. And it gives Bermudians anywhere in the world and residents of Bermuda the right to ask the government and other public authorities for records that they hold. So information in public bodies is really held in trust on behalf of the public. And the PATI Act gives people a a right to make a request for those records. And then it sets out a framework and rules for when you get access to those records and when you don't. So the role of my office is to look at decisions that public authorities issue and decide whether they have properly um, withheld records from public disclosure, or if those records need to be disclosed, we will order them disclosed. And then my team and I promote awareness of the rights and we we also provide guidance to public authorities so that they can make the correct decisions under the PATI Act. Got it. And I remember one of the early um, cases from your office, I believe, was when I was working in the Bermuda Tourism Authority, mm -hmm. um, getting them to release uh, salaries, if I'm not mistaken, ranges and so on. And why I mentioned that is we had a conversation on this show last week because New York State, as of two weeks ago, uh, basically it, law now where every company with four or more employees has to um, share salary ranges and so on. So that critical work you did back then could have been the start of something um, in Bermuda if we want to go that route. But people, there's always like a connection. So that was what I remember. And so just to give people an idea, if you want to know something, write to the office, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But can you just explain um, why is it so important for people to have access to this kind of information? Well, the, the purposes of the PATI Act are really very, um, very focused on empowering people to um, be informed about what public authorities or governments are doing on their behalf. So it's to increase accountability, 
to promote transparency around public spending and public decision making. And it's um, the Patty Act is important because it's part of uh, the good governance reforms from actually the early 1990s when the Ombudsman was created and other institutions to help the public sector do better work. So for individuals, it translates into things like um, if I'm a young entrepreneur in Bermuda and I want to maybe get a government contract, I can ask for a successful bid package on one of the RFPs that I see out and I can look at it and get a copy of it, maybe not the details of the commercial information, but I can look and see what did the big package look like? What were the components? What was the overall presentation? So that next time I want to make a bid, I'm more informed. Um, we see parents asking for policies from the Department of Education or the Ministry of Education that have been applied to their children. We see people who are concerned about public spending asking for copies of government contracts to be able to monitor them or invoices. Uh, people ask for emails, other kinds of memos and decision-making documents because they want to understand the reasons for decisions being made and they want to hold um, those who govern accountable to themselves. So we don't just elect the government and set a, stand aside for five years and watch what they do. People can now be actively involved in helping to give informed input during consultations, to hold officials accountable to what they promised they said they would do, um, or to ask them for the documentation for the conclusions or claims that they're making in the public. I loved informed, um, being able to make informed decisions. And I didn't know about that um, section where being able to find out about bids and everything. Like, I feel like that was a, it's like that was a secret at this point. Um, so with that being said, and today it's International Right to Know Day. What is it all about? And I feel like you just said it, but expand. <laughs> This is our ninth year. We've done this nine times in Bermuda, celebrating the International Right to Know Day. And around the world, you have citizens and advocates and information commissioners and governments, um, journalists, the media, celebrating the right to know. And for us, each year we pick a theme. And this year, our theme is start, lead, change, use the PADI Act. And for us, we're really commending and recognizing the Bermudians and residents who've started to make PADI requests. There's been over a thousand since the PADI Act came into um, effect. So they've started making PADI requests and getting information, getting documents. They're leading solutions and, and um, options using the information they've received. And that's creating changes and potentially solutions to some of the challenges you were talking about earlier. Um, and really, in many ways, the right to know it helps encourage people engage with government and other public authorities. So you were talking about all the challenges that Bermuda is facing these days. And one option, of course, is for people to look at different career paths and maybe look at IB. But I think when we think about right to know day, um, another option is to get informed about the issues that you're concerned about, climate change, education reform, healthcare reform, the impact of government policies and regulations, the um, teachers, the fisher, the fishermen, the taxi drivers, get informed about the issues you care about and engage in helping to come up with the solutions. And that's another option for helping to move both ourselves and our, our country forward. I was just gonna say, Jamal, and when we talk about doing marches and, and have um, this can help you reach that goal of different marches and different things and different issues that you stand for. So I think that was very important to put out there when we look at what the end goal is. So everybody's been talking about it. It's been in the news all week. <laughs> the recently, the government had a cyber attack from an unknown source that will not shall not be named on this um, program <laughs> on a system. Why is this so concerning for the general public? Well, I can speak to a couple of implications for the public's right to know and questions we might have about public records going forward. So one question that it will be important for people to ask once the incident is resolved and settled down is what's the status of public records now? Following a cybersecurity incident, 
do we have access to records still from five years ago, 10 years ago, two years ago? So that'll be an important question when everything settles down. Do we have access to those um, recent or historical records? Has everything been recovered? Um, there's also a question now of how a government responds and functions during a crisis or an incident. And we, my office, the ICO, uh, we had issued a statement during COVID when a lot of work became remote, uh, public officers and um, everyone really suddenly had to switch to working from home, people had different devices. And so we also issued a statement at that time about being mindful of public records. And we did the same thing earlier this week. Um, one thing for both public officers and the public to think about is when the IT systems, communication systems are suddenly instantly removed, but the public's business still needs to be carried on. Um, people still need uh, payments, uh, child and family services still needs to operate. There's certain, certain departments that can't be put on hold, but they don't have any IT system. And so understandably, a number of uh, perhaps personal or different devices were used to carry on work in the immediate aftermath. And we released a statement earlier this week just to remind public officers and the government that if you're switching to alternative communications, it's better to use a corporate uh, a corporate communication. So create a new Gmail account or a new email account um, rather than using your personal one because it doesn't matter what device or platform those, cor those communications uh, occur on. If you're doing the public business, that's a public record. And we wanted to make sure that the public understands that, but also that public officers understand because if there's a PATI Act request for some of those records or information, that device or that platform would be subject to um, being searched for those records. Interesting. Wow. Let me just add something in within that, Jamal, because um, we always laugh at Bermuda, right? How archaic it is and, <laughs> and how we should have everything digital. Is that something that we really should really push for, or do we need to have a dual system um, that we can work off of um, in the event of something like this occurring again? That's for, so I am not, yeah. <laughs> an I, so I'm not an IT person <laughs> at all. <laughs> so I look at that, I look at this from, I guess, questions the public may want to ask. So yeah. if this, if this organization, if the government is holding my information as the public, in trust, what is the redundancy plan? What is the infrastructure to protect my information? And those are certainly questions that the public can ask um, after the incident, perhaps we want the government to be functioning again. But those are questions that people can ask. And for the IT community in Bermuda, this is where you may have informed members of the public that can make informed patty requests and will then understand the information that they get back and can provide consultation to government. Um, many, many in the IT community are doing that to help improve systems, but also explain to the public what the current state of affairs is. That's that's an area where yeah. you can see that the PATI Act could help us all be more informed. Indeed. Thank you. Indeed. Um, Charles H. Jeffs II has a question from the audience. And folks, if you have any questions or comments, please send them through. He says, how did the commission, uh, information uh, office come to be? I believe the legislation was passed on the OBA government, but it was brought to them. This has been the norm for years in other jurisdictions. Let's see. So the, the Public Access to Information Act, the, the concept of public access was introduced under former Premier Scott. Um, it was part of that good governance reform in the 1990s where the ombudsman was conceived, the Office of Project Management and Procurement, and public access to information was on the table then. And it actually went through consultations and white papers and was ultimately passed in 2010. And then it went into effect in 2015. And I was appointed in March 2015. And the act was brought into, um, into effect in April. And it actually went through multiple governments had touched the PATI Act. It came into, um, into effect um, under the prior government. And then the current government of the day has issued a practice code for public, off for public authorities on how to administer the act. So I don't know if you can say that any one government really owned the PATI Act. It was very much a good governance development that came um, that each of the governments of the day touched upon. Yeah. It's interesting because I was going to mention earlier 
that it's just funny, the timing of everything this week. Um, we have uh, former Premier Scott is scheduled to be on tomorrow. And I remember when he brought this to the forefront um, during his tenure. And it took, again, it took so much time from then to actually becoming the actual appointment and the opening of the office. But interesting timing because part of that conversation, we want to go into why was it necessary then? Why did you think of think, think to do it? Um, I, I want to go back to something that was um, not bothering me. Well, it's been bothering me. Um, I watched the press release um, on Monday um, and it was two journalists present. I believe Gary Foster Skelton from the Bermuda Broadcasting Company and Jonathan Bell from the Royal Gazette. And they were asking questions and um, the premier was responding, basically saying that um, I just answered the question and the journalist would then say, well, you didn't answer it. In an instance like that, um, when it comes to trying to get a pet request and asking questions, um, what, I mean, maybe this is just a broad, silly question, but what constitutes an answer or, or, or for, for the questions that we're asking? Uh, well, what constitutes them? That's a great question because that goes to the heart of the right to make a patty request. Um, one of the differences is that any of those journalists or any of your viewers or listeners could go and make a patty request to the department that they think might have that answer. You, you write it down. If you can put a question on Facebook or any of those lists, you can submit a patty request in writing, and then there's a response that has to be given to you in a certain time frame. And as you work through the system, if you're not satisfied with the response you get, you can ask my office to review the decision. And it's free. You simply email and ask us to do that, and we will look if, see, to see if the rules under the patty Act were followed. The response you're getting is also from a public officer, not an elected official. And so that also is a difference. They are obligated to follow the, the um, framework of the Patty Act, and my office will then oversee and enforce that. So it's a, it's a very different system than um, responding to media questions during a press conference. Thank you for that, because it was frustrating to watch. And I think that, you know, Sherry might have mentioned it earlier, saying the power is in the people, right? Absolutely. Um, I want people to understand, don't be like me, just get mad and want to throw your computer away when this is happening. She's literally telling you what you can do if you get frustrated. There's, there's a process. And you have that right. You yeah. have that right. And there is a, when it comes to my office, we might not always order the information disclosed. It might be properly, properly confidential under the Patty Act, but you'll know that someone independent, an independent office has looked at that. And we try and explain to people if something can't be disclosed, we try very hard to explain as much as we can why that happened. So people can come down for International Right to Know Day to the ICO's pop-up booth at Marketplace in Hamilton and in front of City Hall. You can meet the incredible public officers in our office who can help people understand how to make a patty request, what your right is, answer any questions. And we have some very fun giveaways um, and some cookies for our neighbors. Folks, <laughs> I like that. Pretty whole. They have cookies. You, you heard them. They have cookies. No, but seriously, I, I I tell people, if you're not able to get out today, which I hope you are, go on their YouTube channel. They're literally spelled out on many videos how to do this. There's no reason we should be frustrated and not know the things that we'd like to know. We have a question from Rosalind Famous. Um, she's asking, what is the average turnaround time on getting a response to a petty act request? There is a there's a six week time frame. So once you make a patty request, you should get a response within six weeks. If it is a complex request or it requires more time, there can be an extension for another six weeks. So it takes a little bit more time, but it's enforceable and it follows a particular framework. So your right is a bit more secure. And before you go, just remind us um, how people can, uh, you know, get in touch, your website numbers, but also, um, you just said it. Remind them where they can get some cookies. <laughs> so you can come down to our pop-up from 11 to 2 today, meet the officers in the ICO. We'll be in front of City Hall, and we have one at the Hamilton Marketplace. Um, you can also visit our website at ico.bm. And today we're launching, launching a new blog to make all the information that we have in our office a little bit more accessible, bite-sized information about how to use your rights and the kinds of information that's coming out under the Patty Act.
Interesting. Well, we, we've got, they, they, they just have so many questions for you. I, I, I'm going to let you go, Commissioner. I know you have to run, but to Rachel, she's asking, is there a running list of all petty requests, like archive, where people can find them all? Um, you can look on our website for the kinds of decisions that have been asked, but each public office does have a list of the PADI requests that have been made. So you can go to a department and you can ask for their PADI request log. It won't have the name of the requester, but it'll have the requests and whether or not the records were disclosed. And if they were disclosed, you can ask for a copy of them. You, I, I'm going to ask this question for Charles because it seems like your office is a threat to um, a government, right? Uh, that's just from, from um, you know, the outside looking in. But he's asking, what are your thoughts on the government's desire to change a, a charge a corporate entity a fee for a petty request? Was that implemented? Um, as you know, our office, uh, I made a strong statement that there should not be a fee to make a petty request. Those amendments or adjustments to the regulations have not occurred. So it is free to make a petty request. It's free to ask for a review. It is, uh, you've already paid for the services of the information commissioner's office. There's no cost to ask us to conduct a review of any decision. Okay, and one last question, Tori Tall, she's asking, was there a social media um, post about the pop-up? Oh, let's oh. see, what's... Was there, was there any social media um, postings about the pop-ups today? Yes, so you can check our Facebook page um, and we, let's see, we'll be doing a press release, then it should be on our Facebook page and other social media for the ICO. All right, Information Commissioner, Gatanjali Gutierrez, one of my favorite people, you know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank please, you. We haven't chatted since like April or March, but um, please, anything that you, anytime this platform can be as used to you, you know that the door is wide open. So thank you to everyone um, at your office. It's a lot of hardworking people there. Um, thank you for the work that you're doing on behalf of the Bermudian public. Great, thank you and happy Right to Know Day. Same to you. <laughs> All right, folks, if you found that conversation helpful, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Please, I, I, I plead with you, share the information, share the conversation. You know, again, I, I'm, I was being very honest. I was frustrated watching that press conference. Yeah. But I don't have to be. Maya will send a petty request like that. <laughs> yeah, she would. She Okay. I'll just send request. That's all she is, right? So if we want to know something, just put the petty request in. There's numerous videos. There's a blog coming on how to do it. There's no reason anything that the government tells is short on information with. There's no reason we should not know it. Absolutely mm -hmm. none. We're going to take our final break. Uh, come back. It's Daily Play time. Shara's back with Daily Play folks. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> and we'll wrap it up, give our final thoughts on the conversation um, and discussion this morning. So stick with us. Do not go anywhere. Get ready. BAC Group of Companies will be having a huge clearance sale. Many products will be discounted by up to 75%. Mark your calendars because this deal will only be offered from September 28th to the 30th. That's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the BAC parking lot. Big discounts on vanities, toilets, AC units, light fixtures, and much more. You do not want to miss out. Discounts up to 75%. BAC parking lot, September 28th to the 30th. Be there and stay big. Ordering from ER Fisheries has just gotten simpler. With just a few clicks of a button, you can place an order for next day delivery or same day pickup. Our ever expanding list of offerings now include grocery pantry items, specialty meats, and bread and dairy items. We know things have been hard, and we're here to make planning for your next meal or party easy. Whether you're a vegetarian or a meat eater, we have what you're looking for. And best of all, it can be delivered to your door in 24 hours or less. Go to www.erfisheries.bm and check out our wide range of seafood, beef, lamb, pork, poultry, fruits, vegetables, and plant-based products, all available at reasonable prices. That's www.erfisheries.bm. All right, welcome back. Thanks again to the Information Commissioner of Bermuda, Gitanjali Gutierrez. Um, folks, if you appreciated that conversation, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Make sure you share those conversations with your friends, your family, Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter, retweet it, repost it, whatever they call it now. But just make sure that people have this conversation. It was a lot of helpful information in that with the Information Commissioner. Thanks again to our 
partners, the BAC group of companies, Medical Office, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we're able to do this with you on a daily basis. It's time for the Daily Play brought to you by Bermuda Trivia. Now available at stores throughout Bermuda. Follow Bermuda Trivia on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to find out why it's Bermuda's favorite trivia game. Sherry, are you ready? Yeah, sure, Jamal. Let's have it. All right, Sherry. Here we go. Get my music ready and let me get that buzzer. <sighs> All right, here we go. Which city, it's a name that place, by the way, which city in Europe is famous for its casinos and called the gambling capital of Europe? Europe? I don't know that, Jamal. In Europe? You, you know the answer? You knew it before you looked? There we go. So you could, everyone's saying Monaco, but the correct answer is what NTS and Sherido says. It's Monte Carlo in Monaco. Mo Monte Carlo, like, now that makes sense. Yeah. And kind of some of the gambling stuff, but yeah, I. Mm -mm. Yeah, everyone kind of got Monaco, so it's, it, it is in Monaco. It is in Monaco. Okay. I Thanks, mean, guys. We, we, NTS, you ain't gotten the prize. If you didn't say if you get it before Cherry got the prize, because we knew Cherry wasn't going to get it. I'm, I'm, just... <laughs> I'm hilarious. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Yeah, nobody's hilarious. Stop, stop. My stand up. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Whatever, wind beneath your feet. Whatever. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh. Anyway, let's wrap it up. Final, final thoughts on um, today's discussion, transition into IB. Um, and then the conversation with the information commission. I think we we provided some really good information about how being able to transfer into IB, right? And and basically what it comes down to is your passion can land you anywhere, even in the IB sector. And it's for you to um, check out those areas and look to see what can place you in there. Because as we stated. The IB sector seems to continue to grow and uh, seems to be doing quite well in this state of economy. As far as the information officer, um, you did well to pronounce her name correctly, Jamel, and I'm not even going to attempt it. <laughs> but uh, she was awesome. Um, you know, I'm big on transparency and knowing, um, being informed. Um, I love what she had to say about how to, of course, do a petty request, what the cyber attack uh, meant for us and uh, what the government, you know, kind of needs to do to, to make things a little bit better. So um, I think she empowered everybody. And I love that. Yeah. I, as far as the discussion, um, transition and encouraging more Bermudians to get in the IB sector, um, I, I liken it to when Barack Obama became the president of the United States of America. It was the first time young black boys and black girls saw someone who looked like them uh, get into a space um, that otherwise they had never seen, right? So it gave them belief, oh, I, can I too can do that. I think the more uh, people we see who look like us in this, not just in those spaces, but have an influential roles, and there are many people. You've got um, the Kathy Dothys, you've got the um, Patrick Tanix, you've got um, Sheree Dills, you've got many people making waves in that space that um, right now, and, and people have made the transitions. We mentioned Garita Coddington, we uh, spoke mm -hmm. about Danielle Painter, uh, transitions into the, those spaces that can inspire and empower us to believe that we can go in there and make a difference as well. So I think the opportunities for Bermudians to uh, transition in IB and grow in IB um, are there. As far as the Information Commission, as I stated, uh, th this office exists for us. It exists for every last one of us, and it's up to us to take advantage of it, use it, um, and, and really make it work for us. So um, there's no excuse to be frustrated about what the government won't tell us when we have the opportunity to find out if we really want to know. So um, happy right to know day. Get out there, check those pop-ups out outside of Marketplace in Hamilton and City Hall. Um, learn what you need to do. Again, the premier can tell the media I answered that question. But the public officers or civil servants actually have to give you the answers. Mm -hmm. Sherry, you've got some daily inspiration for us? I do. The daily inspiration is being brought to you by ER Fisheries and Food. Defeat is a state of mind. No one is ever defeated until defeat has been accepted as reality. Mm -hmm. From Bruce Lee.
All right. I like that one. All right, folks. Well, please don't forget to subscribe on our website. Follow us on all of our shows from media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Thanks again to our partners, the BAC Group of Companies, Medical Wells, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we're able to do this with you on a daily basis. As always, we appreciate you. We love you. And we thank you for making us part of your daily routine. If all goes well, we will be back to do this again with you tomorrow. She's Sherry Vanderpool and Jamal Hartman. Please do make it a safe and a great day. We are is out. Peace.